Hi, hope you are doing well. Today we will discuss about Zone.js and how you can use the ng zone service from Angular to improve our application performance. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun of Heuristics. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, the framework and all about the algorithm. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. So first we'll discuss about Zone.js. So Zone.js is implementation by Angular, means from Angular side to detect all our asynchronous function mainly. So like you can see like set timeout, your, your promised at then, your all event handlers, like set intervals. So those things, when it get a trigger, so that Zone.js will going to run your change detection. So that's the one perspective and another perspective as well means the Zone.js will ask Angular to detect the change. So it will trigger your change de detections and that we're going to see now. The code you are seeing here is from the previous video. And if you don't know about change detector, detector reference, what is the change detection strategy, what is on push, what is a default strategy, then I will suggest you please go ahead and watch that video first, then come here and continue watching here because it will be a little confusing if you don't watch the previous video. So I'll link in the card, you can watch that one. I was telling that our Zone.js is responsible uh, to tell Angular for the change detection. So this is the older application. So if I will go to the browser and here you, you can see now we are able to tell Angular to detect our changes. Okay, so and we are not using explicitly uh, our change detects a reference to de detect the changes here. So this is the as the as per the previous video, we are providing a, a change in our input and that's the reason this is uh, the our change detection is getting triggered. So what I will do, I will try to disable our zone JS in Angular. So for that, we'll go to our main .ts and here you can provide a object as a to, to our bootstrap app module as a ng zone and here you can write noop so this means that we are saying angular that don't run the zone if now i'll save our application and i will just go to the browser here we'll see we are not running any change detection except the the initial one as we have added our ng zone to noop that means no, don't don't run our zone. So that's the reason we are not able to see any change detection. So what I will do, I'll just uh, try to remove this again and I'll save. And now if we'll go to the browser and you already see that uh, we are getting our detected change means Angular start starting changes. So this is what our zone JS will do. And it also provides a service as ng zone. And that we can inject to our component and by using that we can improve our application performance a lot. Zone.js is responsible for what Angular is. Two-way binding, everything, the change detection. So it, it's so two-way binding is happening like it's possible due to the change detection and change detection is possible due to Zone.js. So in short, two-way binding is possible due to means you are able to see the result due to Zone.js. So remove this from here and now we'll go to our uh, child component again to see what is our ng zone service. So as I told, ng zone service is a implementation of zone.js. So Angular is providing that one. So it uses zone.js so that we can run something in the Angular which is not supported by zone.js like like as I told, set timeout, set interval, your event handler, but some are not like any, some third party async call, which the zone JS is not handling. Now, till now that you can add to the Angular change detection context by using our service, means ng zone service. And also you can do the opposite as well. Suppose you want a piece of code, which is not affecting anything to your HTML, means it, it it will not change anything in, in your HTML page, then it shouldn't be in your Angular change detection strategy. As I told that Zone.js will trigger a change detection on every set interval, every set timeout, every promise, every asynchronous call, and it is not efficient if you, you are not using those code 
to render your HTML. So suppose you are getting some data and that you are rendering on the page, that's well and good. You should use how the default is. But suppose you are calling some logging service, any error occur, you are calling a service to log the data in your server, then in that case, you don't need HTTP detection again. And, and that what you, we can achieve using our ng zone. One is adding a context to the Angular change detection. Another one is the removing the context from Angular change detection. So these are the mostly two uses and for there are further uses and I, I will suggest just go ahead and check the documentation after watching the video so that you will get a little more idea on ng zone. So we'll go ahead and in, inject our ng zone. So I'll, uh, I will add uh, the zone and this we can use to remove or add as I, as I explained. So first what we'll do is we'll try to see this one. Suppose we don't need this number till it run 10 times. So first what I will do, I will have a counter here and we need to increase the counter in some places. Okay. So first what we need to do, as you know, like on every set interval, zone, zone JS will trigger a change detection. So we need to wrap this whole code as outside of the zone JS. So here we'll use this zone and we can run, you can see run outside angular. And here you can pass a lambda function and in this, in the body, we can pass our whole method execution. So anything you are to assign, you want to call a server, like as I told, you want to log some errors in your backend, then you can do this, the same thing here, here as well. I'm just uh, doing this because it will going to save some little time. And if you want to know how you can log your error in the server, means the client exception or client, client any error occur in the client that, that, that you can log in the server, then please let me know in the comment. I will try to make a video on the same. So what we have done here is, first we have told, John, okay, just run this piece of code outside of your context. So don't worry about this. And here we'll add our logic. So counter plus plus. So for now, I'll, I'm just increasing the counter. So now I'm going to see what is going to happen. So here, if you see, okay, everything is working as it is. It is not removed from the zone context, as I told you. And the reason is, if we'll go to our parent component of TS, here if you can see, we are triggering a set interval, okay? And that what causing a change de detection for John John JS. So what we'll do, we'll just comment this one. And now if you go to the browser here, and here you can see nothing is happening. And you can see, okay, Subrat, you have written here, change detection on push and that, that I forgot to comment. Now if I'll comment, and if I'll go again and try to refresh, but still nothing is working. And for that, to know, I'll just comment our June code here. And if I'll just save, and here, if you see, it is, it is, it is start rendering means our change detection is working here. Again, I'll go back and you can see again, we are not able to see the change detection as this piece of code is outside Angular, okay? So we have a pretty simple logic here. We have increased the counter. You may have a pretty complex logic. So what you can do is no need to run your change detection on any call, any promises, any set timeout, any set interval. Then you can use this, your run outside Angular and make sure that as I told you, that if your parent component is pushing some data to your uh, child through input field, then that will going to trigger a change detection. And now as you discuss, now we want this number to be insert. So we want to see the number here when like it ran 10 times or more. Okay. So here uh, it is simple. So here what you can do is what I told you in the first scenario is if something is not in angular context means if it is not in our zone JS change detection, then we can add that one by using the run method. And for us, this code is not in our zone JS change detection. So what we'll do, we'll add that one to our run and it will be same. So it will just going to take a Lambda and here means 
it's an arrow function i'm saying as a lambda so it you can say that as a lambda too i guess i don't know <laughs> but in java it's it's famously known as lambda so what we are doing saying here is john js run this code inside your context and uh, and ask angular to do the change detection so what i will do and if you notice we have a mistake here that our counter should be inside the set interval so that it will going to increase else it will not because that interval will going to run on every second so what i will do i'll just decrease this to 5 second so now we'll go to browser and if and here you can see till the 5 second will not get any data and once we get with the 5 second and then uh, we are starting to see our change detection happening because after five seconds, after counter is 10, we are running, uh, assigning our number inside our zone.run. So this is just a demonstration. You, you can use it for, as I told, for any logging, for any API calls, mainly if you think like any, any put call. So when you call for an update, we just need a response from the browser and detect some changes here so if you don't need anything need to be changed in the in our html then you can run directly run that code outside angular so if it is a recurring process then at the end or wherever you need you can add it back to angular so that it will increase the application performance a lot if your application is big and if you have a tons of components so normally the component size will keep on increasing and this change detection will happen a lot so think like you have an event listener on your mouse move or or on your click or on your, on something then your change detection is running for thousand thousand of times and that will going to slow down your ap application performance means that it will going to deteriorate the application performance and that all that thing you can do here and whenever you need to show something, then you can use the run from zone ng zone to add that to your Angular change detection, so that Angular will detect your changes and uh, it will going to show the pages. So one thing you can do as well, instead of ng zone, you can run the detect change from change detection reference. That will also going to trigger a uh, change detection. And please remember that all our client call means client api calls all our uh, means any any observable you are emitting value through any subject you are subscribing somewhere or any asynchronous call will going to trigger a change detection any change in model going to render a change detection so it's a pretty complex thing but if you just think wisely where you need to change your html there allow means there you need your change detection and where you don't need so you always think opposite way so first we'll think where you don't need the html change add that to run outside angular or use the on push strategy like like we have used that in the previous video and run the detect change where you need the change detection okay so this is what our zone js and ng zone is obviously there are a lot in zone js and there are a lot of things happening inside that that's the reason it can able to do means ask angular for change detection but this many things you will going to use in your application to make it perform better to be honest like um, this run outside angular and running the zone js you're not going to use that often but sometimes it will be pretty helpful to increase the application performance a lot. Okay. And, but you will going to use your change detector reference a lot in a lot of places if you are you know, using multiple components. So please use the zone JS and ng zone. And please let me know if you're finding any difficulty or any doubt, any problems, any error. Please let me know in the comment. And those are helping me to learn more and to solve your doubt so that we both can uh, learn together and increase our knowledge. And as you can see, uh, I have attached a new mic. So please let me know how the sound, is it better? So previously what I used to do is I used to change a lot of things on the EQs and all, and 
I don't know uh, a lot of things about that. I just try to listen which which you know, sounds good. But I think this will going to reduce uh, a lot of time uh, on the post. And that's what, and also the noise, as you said, dynamic mic. So a lot, lot of noise can be reduced because there are a lot of flats uh, nearer to my flat. So, and just let me know how it sounds. So please hit the like button if you're liking the video till now. And please do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will not miss future video. Please give some valuable comment in the comment section below. Those are pretty helpful to decide the future content and to solve a doubt. And, and from that, honestly, I am also learning a lot. And please share this video among your friends, family, colleague, and let them know how they can use JS and how they can use your ng Joan and how they can run a piece of code outside Angular and add it back again to Angular. And please watch this video if you want to learn more about programming and web development. We will going to meet in the next video. Till that, stay happy. Bye-bye.